sermon is Ephesians 1, 1, 14. Ephesians 1, 1, 14. And I would like to call on Dr. Theophilus Rambo. Thank you a lot for this day because we know that this is the day that you are blessed. Amen. We thank you for the life of our children. Lord. Yes. Father Almighty, once again we come before thy sanctuary. Feed us with thy words, O Lord. Sanctify this message, Father. Anoint the tongue and speak through me, O Lord. Let every word that is going to be sown this morning find fertile ground in our hearts, O Lord. And not let our lives be the same again. We thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name, Father. Amen. Can you see them? We shall turn our Bible to Ephesians. Chapter 1, and I'll be reading from verse 1 to verse 14. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we will be holy and blameless before Him. In love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us. In all wisdom and insight, he made known to us the misery of his will, according to his kind intention, which he proposed in him. With a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of the things, of the times, that is, the summing up of all things in Christ things in the heavens and things on the earth. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose who works all things after the counsel of his will, to the end that we, who we are the first to hope in Christ, will be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed you are sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance, with a view to the redemption of God's own possession, to the praise of His glory, the God bless His holy word. Amen. The message for this morning, as you can see in your pamphlet, is the fulfillment of God of your destiny through purpose. The fulfillment of your destiny through purpose. The reason why you are here on Mother Earth is very crucial and related to your existence. How you live your life without God in your life, it is impossible to fulfill your destiny. 
you must have to go to God to ask why you are and for what purpose are you on this earth. For instance, Moses had all the education, the leadership training and metaphysical powers he acquired as a prince of Egyptian throne, and endurance he acquired while in the wilderness as a shepherd for 40 years that he needed to perform the Herculean task of liberating the people of Israel from the bondage of King Pharaoh and bring them to the promised land. Similarly, God raised King Pharaoh from his mother's womb, made him to become the greatest and most powerful king on earth as at that time, so that God could later drown him to teach all the kings of the earth that he is God, the creator of all things, unto him only belongs glory and honor. Then, as we read in Romans 9, 17. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be, might be declared throughout all the earth. Many people today are running from one job to another job in, in search of job satisfaction. Many women are also running from one matrimonial home to another in search of an ideal man, and likewise they are their counterparts. And many Christians are also running from one church to another church, or in search of fulfillment of purpose, which you can never obtain if you rely on your intellect, your business acumen, your charismatic virtues, but without involving God in your search. Amen. 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 And I too was not spared of this human struggle. But the Bible says in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yes. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Yeah. Apostle Paul was a young and well-educated lawyer of his days, who was trained under the most respected rabbi of his days, Gamaliel. But little did he know that God was preparing him to be able to stand before kings, princes, and governors of this world yes. and profess the name of Jesus and proclaim him as the Messiah. In Acts 9, 10 to 16, it reads, And there was a certain disciple at Damascus, named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed, and had seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Yes. Then Ananias answered and said, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he had an authority from the chief priests to bind all that called on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou might receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The mystery of destiny. Yes. The purpose of man on this planet earth. As the baffling scientists, philosophers, astrologers, and religious leaders from time immemorial, we see the stars, and some wise men who even read the stars, the planets, and the galaxies and to know how they are related to our individual characters in life. It was from the knowledge of the stars and heavenly bodies that made the wise men from the East to know if, of the path of our the Messiah into this world, and his great star led them to Bethlehem in Judea. It is hence no wonder today to find many paying money to know what the future holds for them through astrology. Today, you could hardly find any modern magazine where columns are not reserved for your astrological charts, which we call horoscope. And today, virtually everyone knows under which planet you are born in the 12th calendar month, such as Leo, 
Libra, Capricorn, Fiscals, and so on, and all in an attempt to find out why am I on this planet Earth, and what are my goals and destiny. The big question is, can science alone be relied upon or depended upon alone without God to keep us into our destiny? The answer, of course, is no. A lot of children were born as at the same time that our Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem. But while Jesus lived, what happened to the most of those children that were born about the same time in all Judea? Matthew 2, 16 to 18. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy, the prophet saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. Similarly, many children were born, at the same time that King David and Nelson Mandela were born, but not anyone became a powerful king like David or a celebrated liberator and head of a nation like Nelson Mandela, Prophet Moses, and Abraham Lincoln. In other words, no man can descend the misery of the kingdom of God. Amen. Apostle Paul also realized this human malady and said in 1 Corinthians 1, 25-29, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised are God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to nothing things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Amen. Each time I read this proclamation of Apostle Paul, I cannot but give glory to God for the life of Apostle Paul, for my life, and for the last of the few people in my life that God is using to his glory. Amen. The truth of the misery of the kingdom was revealed to Apostle Paul. And he said, the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Amen. Do we really understand this statement? Mm -hmm. God has a useful purpose for Joseph when he allowed him to be sold into slavery by his brothers. To them, they thought they had got rid of a nuisance. And I'm sure they mocked him as he was being led away in chains. Go and fulfill your destiny, Joseph, the dreamer. Mm -hmm. And God was laughing at their foolishness. Amen. They regarded as wisdom. Joseph had to be prepared for the fulfillment of his destiny, which God revealed to him as disclosed in Genesis 37, 6 to 9. And he said unto them, Here I pray you, and this is Joseph telling his brothers, this dream which I have dreamed, for behold, we were binding ships in the field. And lo, my ship arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your ship stood around me, and made obedience to my ship. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams, and for his words. And he dreamed yet again, and told his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and moon and the eleven stars made obedience to me. And he told it to his father and his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him. But his father observed the same. His father and brethren could never ever imagine that he dreams we are all revelations of the mysteries of our God Almighty, Amen. which did not come to pass until after about 30 years. Yes. Joseph's father, Jacob, on his dying bed, 
had this to say, as in Genesis 48, 7 to 12, according to Joseph Smith's translation. And Jacob said unto Joseph, When the God of my fathers appeared unto me in Luz, in the land of Canaan, he swear unto me that he would give unto me and unto my seed the land for an everlasting possession. Therefore, O oh my son, he has blessed me in raising thee up to be a servant unto me, in saving my house from death, in, de in delivering my people, thy brethren from famine, which was sore in the land. Wherefore, the God of thy fathers shall bless thee, and the fruits of thy loins, that they shall be blessed above thy brethren, and above thy father's house. For thou hast prevailed, and thy father's house hath bowed down unto thee even as it was shown unto thee, before thou wast sold into Egypt by the hands of thy brethren. Wherefore thy brethren shall bow down unto thee from generation to generation, unto the fruit of thy loins forever. For thou shalt be a light unto my people, to deliver them in the days of their captivity from bondage, and to bring salvation unto them when they are altogether bowed down on their sin. For God, has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Otherwise, how could anyone expect an ordinary shepherd boy to confront the all-powerful Philistine when the brother of David had him asking what was to be done who confront the powerful Philistine? The senior brother despised him so much that he said in 1 Samuel 17, 27 to 29, and the people answered him after his manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man who killed him. And earlier his eldest brother had, when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart. For thou art come down, that thou might see the battle. And David said, What I now done, is there not a cause? David was brought before King Saul, and he too looked at him, and felt sorry that the handsome boy just wanted to commit suicide, but no one could understand God's purpose on your life. David never doubted himself and his faith in God. He had developed a healthy relationship with God that he could withstand any storm and overcome any giant in his life. With a sling and a stone, approached the giant Goliath and said, Thou said, David, to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear, with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied, this day will the Lord deliver thee to my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord save not with the sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give into our hands. Amen. Amen. Why do you doubt? And why are you afraid? Is God not able to bring down the wall of Jericho on your path to fulfilling your purpose? Is God not able to overthrow the giants in your life? Where is your faith? Start today to build in a concrete personal relationship with God. Amen. Esther was a common Jewish slave girl in the great kingdom of Persia. When the palace guards of King Ahasuerus came and kidnapped all the virgins in the town, perchance the king would be able to find a young woman beautiful enough to replace the deposed queen Vashti as punishment for her subordination. Esther was among the virgins at Doctored by the palace guards. Now, there are three things or three lessons of significance here. One, Esther was a slave girl and a Jew in a country of pagans where the Jews were so much despised. Secondly, 
there was money or there was more young women of noble birth that were among the young virgins whose wealthy and influential parents would be happy to become the king's in-laws. And thus the Jews also had a formidable antagonist, an enemy, called Han, a man, to contend with who would want to see all Jews exterminated. So